Okay, so really quick, just wanted to kind of point out a couple things. This set of tutorials is going to walk you through a lot of the important basics and how to get this project done, but it is not by any means a step-by-step -step to take you to completion. It's all about kind of like, here's some tricks for the eyes, here's some tricks for the ears, and I'm going to show you multiple ways of doing stuff. So I really want you guys to kind of experiment a lot and, you know, just realize that this set of tutorials is really about kind of giving you a starting place that you can then go through and sort of finish on your own rather than thinking of it as sort of the complete answer you know all the answers that you need on this project and also an important thing is don't feel like you have to watch all these videos all the way through and then start working that's not even how they're designed you should watch one and when i go through something pause the video and try it these videos should be running with Illustrator open when you're kind of working along with me. First thing is you make a new document. A lot of people will go to file and open and they'll just try and open up their photo and it just makes um, Illustrator save it in this weird SVGZ format and it's just not cool. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go, give this a name, short self-portrait, all right? And I'm gonna pick the uh, orientation. My photo happens to be landscape, so I'm gonna pick landscape. If yours is portrait, then pick portrait. But go ahead and click OK. So the first step is make a new document and then you go to File, Place. And that's where you're going to go ahead and get your picture. That one. OK, so I drop the image in on my screen and I can kind of resize it. Now, one thing that happens sometimes is when you bring in a photo that's raw from a camera, you'll bring it in and it's going to be huge, crazy huge like this. If that happens, you can just go to the navigator. OK, and if it's not open, you go to Window, choose Navigator. But you go to the navigator and you just kind of shrink down towards the little tiny mountains there. And then you can see like your whole picture and you just want to shrink your picture down till it fits into that artboard, that little black and white kind of square that you see. And then to get back out to normal size, you just double click on the eyeglass or on the hand tool. All right, hand tool is best actually. And now it's kind of fits all right on my screen. So that's a shortcut when you're zoomed in to zoom back out, you can click on the hand tool to fill your screen with your artboard or go to the little zoom tool here, double click on that to get yourself to 100% view. All right, now that that's done, what I wanna do is lock the layer. You see I put that little lock in there in that little empty square, click there, lock the layer down, and now I can't write on, I can't move that photo. It kinda of locks it down and keeps me nice and safe. Cool, all right, so that's how you set up the document. All right, make sure you do it this way. Don't do file open and open your JPEG, file new, make the document and then file place to put your photo on it. Okay, so now what we gotta do is we gotta start learning about layers. Now layers are really critical on this project and uh, you can see that we've already got layer one here. And if I click on this little window and if layers aren't showing up, okay, it's this icon or you can go to window and choose layers. Look, there's a shortcut F7. Didn't know that, learn something new every day. So F7, if we press that, it's gonna open and close that, okay? So hit F7 if this isn't open, and uh, you're gonna see this layer one right there where we have our photo, but we wanna make a new layer, okay? And we just click on this button here to make a new layer, all right? And we double click, and we can give it a name. And I'm gonna just type in head because I'm gonna trace my head on this next section here. And this is how we need it set up. We need it blue, and we need the eye open, okay? And if we have blue eyes, that's how I remember it, right? Then I know that my image is ready for me to write on. And what I'm gonna do is click on the pen tool, come down here and make sure that I turn the fill off, okay? When I'm tracing things, I want the fill off so that I can just continue to see. And uh, now I'm just going to basically, just like I did before, I'm gonna trace my head out. Now, most of you have hair, right? So like if I was tracing my son here, Caleb, I could click anywhere up here and it just doesn't matter because the top of his head doesn't matter, right? I can just go click, 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 and then I can see the side of his face right here, right? So I can kind of like, so just kind of trace the side of his head there and then kind of I can see his little cheek pops out there a little bit. All right, so I'm just kind of tracing around. And you very rarely get it perfect on the first try. And I really messed that one up because I intended on doing mine. I should have zoomed in a little. But note that, you know, I traced up in his hair and it's all like kind of squared off. But it doesn't matter because his hair is going to cover it later. The only part that I need to make sure that I'm tracing well are these outside edges. And I'm glad that I messed up because I want to show you something. With the pen tool, right, I just finished. 
Um, a couple things you can do. The first thing you can do is if you hold control, it switches back to the last arrow you used. Now we've got the black arrow, which we don't want. We want the white arrow. So click on the white arrow and then the pen. And now when we push on control, when we've got the pen selected, you can see that it grabs that white arrow and that lets us kind of click here and sort of drag these handles around and it lets me just sort of nudge all these points so that I can get this face looking a little bit more like it should, right? So this is all just a matter of kind of playing with it and eventually it starts to make more sense. But I understand that it's a little weird at the beginning and guess what? It is for everybody. There's no shortcut. It's only practice, practice, practice. And one day, all of a sudden, it just clicks. It's starting to look pretty awesome now. All right, so there we go. You can see that I took the time to get that face right, okay, those edges, especially those edges here. I didn't mess with up here because it doesn't matter. It's going to be covered by the hair later. But just kind of trace those edges, okay? And now the secret to getting the color right really quick just kind of click on this eyedropper tool and just suck up some of the color and it look kind of pink so control z and just click another spot still a little pink really pink okay so there's kind of a skin color right see and you can also click on the neck right here around it's always going to kind of as you click around be different colors but you know that's actually looks that's pretty much you know his color i think right around in there all right so once i get the color right then what i do on my layers palette is I want to lock the head layer and then hide it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I, because I wanted to trace myself, um, I'm going to unlock that layer and I'll trace myself also. Maybe I'll be working on two here. I'm going to just do this right now real quick and um, I'll catch you guys on the next video and we'll start talking about the next step. Okay, so you can see here that I've got my head traced and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the layer so I don't mess up my head and close the eyeball here. All right, and so what that does is that hides the head. So now I can start working on the next thing, okay? Now, generally, actually, what I recommend to people is start at the bottom. So I actually should have traced my neck first, but since I didn't, that's okay. I want to actually show you a little bit of a trick here, all right? So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to call it neck. And here's another thing about like tracing the neck layer. And again, it's it's all understanding how this pen tool works, right? My neck, the part that's visible is right here to my shirt and then coming out of my backpack here and up here right behind my ear. So that's all that I have to worry about. I want all this part to just like have a visible area. So I'm going to just kind of click here, click here, and just kind of trace that neck around. Okay, I'm going to grab that. Okay, let's see how that goes. Click there. And then I kind of come up here and it's got a little bit of a curve there. And then I'm just going to kind of wrap it around and close it. Okay. Now I still have the fill color from my head from earlier, which I don't exactly want. So what I'm going to do is just click flip right there. And that way I can see the edge of the lines, right? By flipping the fill and the stroke, I can see the line like right here. I can see that I'm off my neck kind of comes out. So I'm going to just take the white arrow by holding control, click there, and I imagine it's command on a Mac, but I'm not positive, but that's a pretty good guess, I bet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just kind of pull this neck up, and I'm going to just kind of force this curve right into where I want it, all right? And I use, remember, I want to use Illustrator's power. I want to use these curves. Now, none of this matters because it's going to be covered by my head, okay? So I flip the colors, and now when I turn my head and my neck on, you can see it's kind of got like the outline of my head pretty much down here, right? Now, the problem is that my neck right now is above my head, right, in the stack here. And, um, like, let's go ahead and make my neck just a slightly different color. And here's another really cool trick. The neck is... Um, underneath my head so it gets a little more shadow so it should be darker right so what I'm gonna do is click on my neck and I'm gonna just instead of trying to click around and find a color I'm gonna just take my K value and just bump it up a little bit and see how that makes it darker okay and so now when I click off I see this like big weird nudge over my head okay I just made the word nudge up um, and what I want to do is I just want to take it from the above the head layer and I'm going to drop it below the head layer, which I have to unlock first. 
All right, and now look at that. Now you can see my head kind of coming over my neck there, and it sort of looks pretty good. That neck's a little, it was brightened up too much. See, I want it just slightly darker. Okay, just very, very little bit. I don't know if you can even see that in this recording, but it looks good to me right now. So that's the next step is I'm going to trace my neck, which looks really freakish. Let me look at something really quick. I'm going to hide both of these. Yeah, see how my neck comes out? When I'm, I'm looking at it here, and it's like there's my chin, and then my neck comes out. I've got this funkitude there. So I'm actually going to fix that really quick. And uh, just kind of click on control there, and I'm going to just pull that neck back. So. Okay, and I think that when I put my goatee in a little bit later, it's going to look cool. All right, so now what I'm going to do is lock those layers, and I'm going to hide those layers, right? So now they're not in the way, so I can see what's under there, and I click here at the head layer, and I'm going to make a new layer. And by the way, whenever you click the create new layer, it will create a layer above whatever layer you're on. So if I click right here and make a new layer, look, it makes it above neck but below head, all right? So usually you're going to want that layer to be right on the top because we're going to try... Oops, we're going to try as we're moving forward to just go from the back, the thing that's farthest away from the camera, forward. All right, so next thing, actually, let's go ahead and tackle the ear. That's one of the harder, harder elements. So let's tackle that in the next video. Okay, so I'm making a new layer here. I'm going to call this one ears. By the way, I do recommend doing the neck first before the head, but uh, as you can see, it doesn't matter, right? You can do things in any order. Um, but the general way that I kind of, it just helps people that are new to Illustrator kind of work their way through it when you can start thinking of, you know, back to forward and then you realize how little you have to draw, right? Because a lot of things are going to be covered up. So let me just kind of trace my ear here. All right, and flip those inside out again. And I can see that I'm pretty far off. That's okay, because I can always just drag it back. And this is kind of the easy part, because this is, you know, once you can trace one outside edge of something, you can trace the outside edge of anything, right? It's all basically the same thing. This is the exact same thing as tracing the head. You can see that I got all these little tweaks that I'm doing, right? This is, this is what it takes to get a good self-portrait. All of this little kind of perfecting your lines so that everything looks right. This is what you got to do. Okay, so there I've got an ear looking pretty good, I think. I need to bring that back just a tad. All right, it's looking pretty good. And I'm going to leave it actually on a stroke, all right, because I need to see all these areas here. The other thing you can do is fill it. And um, really, if I turn on my head layer, the ear should be the same color. So what you can do is click on the eyedropper tool. With the ear selected, you just click on the head, and it makes it the exact same color. Okay, you see that? But now I can hide the head. And now there's two options here. I can invert the ear, which is what I generally do. But the other thing that I can do is I can, look, if I open up this ears layer, here's the path, right? I can hide just that one path also within my layer. So that's what I'm going to do because it's a different way to do it. And um, there's two ways to do the ears here. What you can do is you can trace the actual lines. Like, you know, I can just kind of trace this here. And then um, make that just a stroke. And then I can do the same thing here. I see there's, oops, forgot to control click. Uh, I can see another kind of path here. Control click. Um, I can see this little curve here. Control click, and actually I guess this probably should be down to like about like that. Uh, you know, so that's one option, and then you can just highlight all of those and use my little color trick that I showed you earlier. Make those a little bit darker. And then when you turn that ear back on, you've got kind of an ear. Now, that I don't think looks so good, all right? So, and I knew it was not going to look that good. Although some people do it that way and they get it looking decent. Here's what I like to do. Okay, I'm going to hide that path again. Make sure that I'm on the ears layer. And what I like to do is I like to just kind of say, well, here's just a whole kind of area sort of darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the outside edge of that area. Hold Alt to break that arm, bring it back around. 
Okay, oops. Just hold Alt to bring that back to where it was. Okay, so there I've traced the little area, and I'll just flip that in and make it dark. And now I'm going to do the same thing here, trace this area. Alright, and then I see another area kind of here. It's just kind of a little arc. Alright, um, and then maybe... Well, and let's, let's actually just kind of even turn my ear back on and look at that ear. Now that ear looks a lot better, right? Let's zoom out some and close my ear layer. Head and neck. Look at that. That actually looks pretty good. If I do say so myself, and I just did, that looks pretty good. And uh, one thing I'm noticing, though, is that I don't see a lot of definition on my chin and my ear. Check out this really, really cool trick in the next video about creating shadows under some of our objects. Okay, so next trick is, um, you know, I can see my jawline because I did create this little bit of a, um, uh, you know, darker color on the neck. A couple ways to handle this. What a lot of people do is they'll just go on the head layer. Oops, make it visible. Unlock it, though. They'll go on the head layer and they'll just sort of pick up a stroke. Right, that's kind of just basically a darker color. Okay, and then you can see my jaw pretty well. That's one way to do it. Um, but here's a better trick, and this is what I like to do. Again, I think that there's a lot of little tricks here that are subtle little things to do that really, really help. Oops, okay, so I'm gonna click on my head and tell it no stroke, okay? And now here's what I like to do is I will hold Alt Right, which you know duplicates an object. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of drag a copy of my head down just a little bit. And then I'm going to right click and do arrange, send to back. Now, this trick only works if you're using layers. Because if you're not using layers and I send to back, it's going to send it way below this picture. But since my head is on its own layer, when you do send to back, it only sends it to the back of the current layer. So right now, this little part that I just made a little bit uh, lower is below my head object but not below the neck all right even though i sold it send it back so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just kind of bump that color up a little bit or the k value right remember that makes things darker and now look at what a cool line i've got look at that shadow looks very very cool now a little bit a little bit thick out here but all i have to do is click on that object use my white arrow and i can just kind of Oops, drag this corner in, right? Because I wouldn't really have a shadow going off the edge of my head. Okay, so I just drag that shadow in. Maybe even have to, oops, bring this one in just a smidge. Okay, and that way it's casting the shadow just on my neck because obviously it wouldn't cast a shadow on the air. All right, so I can just use that to kind of perfect that shadow and I get a very very cool effect okay and this ear actually as I'm looking at it I think that ear could use the same treatment I've never really done it with the ear before but I'm going to make a duplicate and then arrange send it back and because it's on a layer right it didn't go behind my head or anything and I can just click on my color and bump the color up so oh my gosh that looks good look at that look at that that looks cool. Now look at, you know what's cool about it is that you get that really cool aspect of like the lines thicker here and it gets real thin, right? Uh, same thing here at the bottom of the ear. That is a cool effect, all right? So here I am again recommending that you do it this way. You can just throw a stroke on it and does it look okay? Yeah. Does it look crazy awesome? Wicked awesome? As we once said in the 80s? Yeah, it does look wicked awesome. All right, so, uh, well, you know, I'm still not happy with that neck, but we'll have to see what happens when we finish tweaking things. All right, so turn all those off, and guess what? That's right, I'm going to make a new layer. Click here, new layer, and um, I will do next my mouth. Coming up in the next video. Okay, the mouth, I'll be honest with you, a little bit challenging a lot of times. Um, one of the things that's challenging about it is that... Um, Boy, this is a really low-res picture. This uh, I got this off Facebook, and that's why it's so poopy, because I couldn't find the original. 
Um, but one of the problems is that there's usually not like a real defined edge between your lips and your face. It kind of just sort of, you know, m meshes in uh, so that it can't be really hard to trace. Like right here, you can see it. You can't even see the edge of my lip versus my face. Okay, so that makes it a little challenging. On Caleb here, it's a lot easier. Me, not so much. Um, here's another trick that's kind of handy, right? What I'm going to do is eyedropper right now, the red. Okay, and see how I get that kind of pinkish tone? And then I can just flip it and so that I'm tracing with kind of that outside color that I'm going to want to work with. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to start working on it. There's no real trick here that I have except, um, you know, try and trace where you think the lip should go when you can't see it. All right, so let me just kind of go there. And, um, yeah, this is all I got right here on this one. Oops. Can I drag that in and then hold Alt to get this one back to where it needs to go. Okay, and then I'll flip it. Now, I'll tell you right now, your lips are always going to look creepy when you get started. Just deal with it, all right? Uh, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, um, on the mouth, actually, I'm going to lock that lip so that I can, you know, click right here next to it without accidentally selecting it and making new points in it. And then I'm going to kind of fill in my top lip here. Do I have freakishly thin lips or... <laughs> Is this photo like just really hideous? You guys are like, dude, it's your face that's hideous. So there. All right. So I'm kind of trying to just trace that and again, flip the color. And um, here's what I like to do. Okay. They look weird. All right. But they're over my photo. Let's do this. Let's back out, first of all, and let's turn on all the other layers. Okay, you know what? See, now it doesn't look so bad. Looks hideous? Not so hideous for some reason, okay? Um, so don't worry about it when your lips look really stupidly bad when you're working on it, all right? That's just how it happens. So here I'm going to take this point. I'm going to drag this down because what I do notice is that my lips are not connecting and of course they do connect bring this one back down a little bit all right so I'll just kind of tweak in the lips all right um, so yeah that's kind of uh, kind of it for the lips and then we're gonna work kind of on the inside of the mouth here really quick I'm gonna show you my tricks that I like to do first thing with nothing selected I'm gonna go and pick like this really dark area in here okay and then I'm just gonna kind of fill this area in so I want it to go right on the corners of the lips and I'm basically just making a background and now I can take that path and put it in the back of my lips okay and I'm gonna hide that and now for the teeth teeth are challenging um, my recommendation is to I'm gonna take this pen tool here let me suck up the color of my teeth they're not perfectly white you don't want pure white teeth in the cartoon thing. It kind of looks a little weird sometimes. So just sample your teeth. Try and pick a color that doesn't make you look like you really got to go to the dentist. And now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just kind of uh, start working on drawing these teeth then. Okay. And so what I like to do is kind of use the trick that we used. This is why I made you do it. See how I'm doing those bumps there? Okay, and this is so low res, it's very hard to see the actual shapes at the bottom of my teeth. Hopefully your images are better. Okay, I can see it kind of goes there. But then I can see it kind of goes down there and then up a little bit. And get a little bit down there. You see I'm just tracing like those outer sort of edges of the teeth. That's what I want. All right, your eye, when we get done with this, you'll see that your eye will fill in a lot of the blanks for you oops get that back like it was and hold alt and pull this guy out there okay um, and those teeth need to go behind my lips and turn that path back on 
and let me back out. All right. So there's the mouth. Turn on all those other ones. Okay, you can see it looked really creepy up front. Not so bad here. What I can see that I don't like is this little opening over here. So I'm going to fix that. And then this part up here I think should be lighter. All right. Okay, so really quick, um, tweaks on the mouth. Okay, I've got my teeth done. One of the things that I don't like about it is that my gums up here are as dark as like the kind of shadow area in my mouth. So I need to fix that. Really easy to do. Um, all I'm going to do is go to my teeth, uh, under my teeth layer, right? I'm going to make a new, oops, I didn't want to make that. Under my teeth layer, actually I'm probably just going to have to draw it and then we'll fix this later. Unlock that whole section there on my pen tool and I'm just going to kind of draw an area here right down the middle of my teeth okay and again it went up a little bit too high so what I have to do is going to drag that down um, where's that guy's got to go behind my teeth and now I'm going to suck up the color of my lips but then darken it just a little bit Okay, not as dark as the inside of my mouth, but some. And you can see that I totally messed up right there. Getting a little too click happy. So I just drag this point here and drag that up so it's right behind my lip. Okay, and what that did was that kind of filled in this area here on my lips. I can see my lips aren't touching. I need to fix that. So again, pay attention to these very tiny little details. That's the difference between a great self-portrait and one that looks kind of pooptacular, all right? The teeth here, I'm gonna actually pull them all the way back even though they're, to trace them properly, I didn't see that shadow in there, but I just want them going all the way. And actually, I'm even gonna pull this down and manufacture a new, well, manufacture a new division in my teeth that I couldn't see but I'm gonna draw it in because it just looks more natural there, okay? So there's my teeth looking a little bit weird. Um, I probably, if I was uh, taking a little more time and not doing a training, but really wanted this, I would probably line up these points, need to be kind of lined up with the actual tooth that you're, you're working on, right? So I can kind of take this tooth here, drag that down a little bit, oops this one down a little bit and so I'm just kind of like again just sort of perfecting everything making it look you know up close a little more right I can actually get rid of this one there all right control and do you see what I mean about um, you know lining up where there's a dent right those dents represent you know a tooth so I don't want to have two dents in the middle of one tooth or then I have a dented tooth all right what I want is just it to be the kind of openings in my gums there for my little twofers to come out of. Okay. Alrighty, so I'm gonna back out real quick. Click off of it and see how it looks. You know what? That actually is looking pretty good. Again, it looks really creepy up front, but looks good when I get closer. Alright? So pay attention to the fact that you can also tweak within your layers, within mouth, I can move things up and down and create new objects. Um and that actually, that looks pretty good, I think. All right, so I'm happy with that. And uh, that's pretty much how it's gonna stay now. Oops, I just noticed this little bit right there it needs to be fixed. Um, just get that point out of there. Probably will handle it. Yep, it does. All right, so good enough. I probably actually tweak that and, you know, round it out a little bit, you know, again, the, the person that takes the time for all of this is the person that ends up with a really great self-portrait at the end. So tweak it, get it looking right. It's looking good enough, especially when you back out. Okay, always back out because remember things look better when you back out. And look, this is already looking really good. All right, so little tiny tweaks on the mouth. Remember that every path within a layer uh, has its own kind of like sub layer. Each path has its own position. And so I can even go in and kind of double click those and name this, you know, teeth. All right, so you can even name the individual paths. You know, this is a uh, lower lip. And sometimes you can't tell what something is, just hide it. What disappears? Okay, that's the upper lip. And this is the mouth shadow. 
or shadow poo, which is the Latin for shadow. And this was the gums. All right, cool. So you guys get the idea though about tweaking the objects within the layer. And again, uh, within layers, if I tell it to go to bottom, it's only going to go to the bottom of this stack. So that's another very important reason that we use layers on all of our uh, self portraits, right? Because they're really complex and we need those layers to help us organize stuff. All right. So a uh, couple tricks for eyes. Next one. All right. So I'm going to lock my mouth layer and you know what? Everything to me is looking really good so far. Everything I've got here is looking good. So I hide those again and that allows me sort of to work again. Now the next one we're going to do are the eyes. Eyes give a lot of people problems. All right. There's a couple different ways to do them. And so let's just sort of uh, take a look here. Boy, I wish I had an image with higher resolution. I know that most of you are working with better resolution images so that it's not so JPEG-y. Um, but uh, anyway, so here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the eyes trick. Okay, so I'm gonna click on my pen tool, of course. Um, and we can even kind of eyedropper in the eye color there. Wow, it's looking super pink. I'm gonna eyedropper in my teeth color. A nice white area of my teeth. Your whites of your eyes are not perfectly white, okay? I know you want them that way, but they're not. So we're gonna pick a white, and then I like to, of course, flip it so I can see what I'm doing. And with my pen tool, I'm gonna to trace the actual opening of my eye here. Okay, hold Alt to bend that. Okay, so, and then I like to have a little bit of a curve on this one end a little bit more, all right? So flip it. Now, does that look like an eye? No, does it look creepy? Yeah, don't worry about it, okay? Just like with the mouth, things look creepy when it's showing over your picture, all right? So don't sit and redo it over and over and over again, all right? So here's, here's what we're gonna do. Click on that object, flip the stroke and the fill, and now what we're gonna do is your pupils and your iris, are they perfectly round? Yeah, they are. So don't draw it, dude. Come on. Use the ellipse tool and hold shift when you do. And that makes a perfect circle. Okay. And what I like to do is you see that little dot there that represents the middle of the circle. I'm going to put that middle of the circle right in my pupil, right in the center of my pupil. Okay. And I can see that now it's a little too big. So I hold shift and shrink it down from the outside. And now I'm going to suck up the color of my eye. Not very visible here, so I'm going to grab it from over there. Okay. I've got kind of really grayish eyes. I do. Okay. It's a little darker than I want, but that's okay. Um, and I'm going to flip that inside out. And now I'm going to trace my pupil. Again, hold and shift with the circle tool, the ellipse tool. All right. I'm going to drag that ellipse to the size that I want it. Move it to right where I want it. Whoop, move the wrong one. And basically that little center point should be like totally on the exact same center point as the eyeball. Oh my gosh, it keeps. Ugh. All right. Oh, I went too far back. We do the ellipse. All right, I'm going to just kind of leave it. Actually, let me fill it. And uh, so I'm going to flip it to fill now. And of course the fill on your pupil is black. Um, the fill on your eye, we just flip it. And then we're going to also fill in the eyeball part itself. Okay. Now I can see that my pupil is off. So I just kind of drag it to the center of that eye. What a pain in the butt. All right. So there's pretty good. Now this is the trick on the eyes. Okay, this only works in CS5. I'm not even going to show you the CS4 tricks anymore. You can watch the old videos, which were quite bad. What I do is I highlight all of these objects. Another reason I use layers, right? Because I can just turn all the other ones off and then drag a, a line or drag the arrow over these objects and that selects them all. See how they're all selected? Now check this out. New tool here called the Shape Builder, right? I just click on that puppy there. And I drag over and see how when I move over these overlapping areas, it kind of kind of puts like looks like a screen on them. If I hold Alt, you see how it turns that from a plus to a minus sign on the tool? Plus sign, minus sign. 
if I click them with the alt held down that subtracts that area so I just go click and click and look at that my eye is done you see how easy that was again pretty creepy here not so bad there all right so again they look creepy when you're doing them on top of your actual photo so I'm gonna do the same thing over here trace that eye uh, let me suck up that color get this color sucked up trace that outline of the eye and again my nose is going to cover it so I'm going to go back here to where my eye would be going to or where I think it would be going to okay a little bit off that's okay now I draw my circle here and um, here's what I like to do with the pupil so that they're kind of look more the same size I like to just kind of uh, drag a copy of that other pupil over there okay now it's a little farther from camera so it will be just a little bit smaller but that's enough for me to get kind of close okay and then this one of course I'm going to suck up the color of this eye and um, I think that pretty much should have me set up arrange send back there it goes okay and then my pupil um, should be on front so I just arrange send to back and that puts this eye there same thing oops flip my color bang get my magic tool here the shape builder tool hold alt delete that delete that all right looking good boom those are some good looking eyes all right so looking good the next uh video we're going to talk about the eyelashes and how do you get those little details around the eyes because that's a big part of it because right now this looks weird all right so let's talk about how to de-weirdify your uh, self-portrait okay so uh here i am going to zoom in a little bit more on my eyes and i want to de-weird my eyes okay they're looking weird okay so i want to fix that and uh, some of the things I need to do is I need to, first thing I need to do is I need to get some kind of eyelashes on here, or at least get some some frames around my eyes, like a little bit darker line, because right now they're just like these weird white things. So a couple ways to do that, and here's one thing that I recommend, okay? So what we're gonna do is, um, with a selection tool, we're gonna click on this background eye thing, and uh, you can see that we've got a line all the way around. One thing that's real easy to do is just go ahead and throw some stroke on that. Okay. All right. Now, the problem with doing it that way is that you can see that the fill, when I zoom in, the fill uh, kind of goes sort of over my, um, you know, my iris there. Okay. So here's the Schwartz trick. Check this out. I'm going to click on that eye and I'm going to... Oops, just click on it and do edit copy. And I'm gonna do edit, paste in place. Okay, or even paste in front is probably better. Okay, paste in front, that just pastes it right on top of everything. Oh, it pasted it right on front, in front of that object, the original. So I'm gonna just do arrange, bring to front. And you see that it kind of hides everything, but now watch this, I just, take my fill away and see how my eye looks the way it should now okay that's a good way to do it let's turn it back on and let's see the freaky factor of this eye versus this one okay it looks like I have eyeliner on so I just kind of go to a much thinner stroke still looks like I have eyeliner on so I go to a much lighter stroke let me suck up the colors on um, let's see on this here all right uh, I'm still not crazy about it. So um, that's one way to do it though, right? And a lot of people on their self-portraits, well, all they do is they just kind of have a solid black line and that's how they handle it, okay? But to me, I think it looks too much like eyeliner. But I wanted to show you that one because for some of you, that will work okay. And I'm gonna zoom in. Let me get just that top one that's not filled in. Yeah, that's the one delete it now sometimes this happens too. you get in this weird mode where it lights everything up and you see stuff up here just double click and it goes back all right you're in kind of a special mode that I'm not really wanting to talk about now but that's what that is all right so I'm gonna click on this object get rid of my stroke and now here's how I like to handle the eyes what I like to do is I'm gonna take the pen tool and I'm going to basically draw kind of like where I think my eyelashes would be
okay and I'm gonna fill that with a dark color real dark and fill it super dark and now I'm just gonna with that shape do arrange send it back okay now I think that that gives kind of a more realistic look on the eye okay you see that so I actually created a shape that if if we were to look at my eyes let's go ahead and turn everything off again okay and I just guessed as you saw but if I were to guess how thick my eyelashes were in that in those particular spots um, maybe I'd kind of have it right okay so let's actually turn off all these other ones right so kind of tracing just sort of like where I think my eyelashes would go right so that's how I like to do them and I like to do top and the bottom and again a lot of people do self portraits different ways this is the Rob Schwartz way you may like it or you may feel free to find your own tutorial or look at some examples of some other people's work and see kind of how they like to do it right because this is not a project where there's one way to do it this is a project where there are 18 billion ways to do it okay so that was not looking so good so it just needs a little you know tweak in and all but you can see my little trick for the eyes is to just basically draw a shape and then drop it underneath my my actual eye and then that gives it I think kind of a nice a nice look there oh by the way look at this one really quick for girls what you would do is since you want to have like kind of like you know pretty looking eyelashes you can kind of bring it out here to like kind of a cute little point and then curve it down all right and then let's take a look at this Let me do a range, send it back. See how that's girly because it's got that little point there, right? You can just kind of bring that point out and that makes them look more girlish, okay? By having them kind of come to that, you know, put a little cute little curve in it and have it just kind of curve up and that makes them look girly. To make it a little more masculine, we just kind of bring it down. We don't want that curve. We just want them to kind of, kind of be there. All right, so that's the trick on the on the eyeballs. And the last thing I'm noticing is that this eye uh, pupil is going too far over the top. So I'm gonna just highlight all this and use my magic tool again. Ooh, and I wanna deselect this first though. I don't want this one selected. So I hold shift and see how I've got everything now except for my little uh, eyelash that I just made. And that means that now when I click this and get rid of that, Oops. It, uh, it won't delete a hole out of that eyelash. Okay, so the next step for us is going to be the nose. So I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to call it nose. Now, this is the second time recording this video because nose is hard. And uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, and you're going to have to find them yourself, but there's galleries on the Mac Lab, and there's also galleries on Brain Buffet. And so what I recommend, and if you don't have access to the Internet or whatever, how are you watching this video? I just thought of that. Um, yeah, but if you uh, you know if you can't find these galleries or whatever, grab a comic book, grab an illustration, go online and look for comic characters or illustrations, and take a look at how the noses are drawn. Right? You can see sometimes it's just a shape. Some people are kind of doing a shape with another line, a little circle there for the nostril. Again, a simple shape, a little more detail here. Um, some of the really great examples up here at the top of the page, right? Use a lot of shadow. Right, they're really using the shadows to their advantage to see kind of how it's done. Right, so you're gonna just have to do a little bit of research and find out how people are doing noses and look at your picture. Right, is your straight on like this? Is it more to the side like this? Is it straight on like that? Look at a couple of different examples of people and how they did it, and then this is a really great one, straight on. Right, really really good. Take a look at how it's done. Right, and take a look at how you can create these shapes. Um, you know, and, and how other people are doing it, right? A lot of times you get kind of this, I call it the wacky W, right? It kind of looks like this weird W here. Um, but that's one way to do noses that works for a lot of people a lot of the time. And then a lot of people are doing just kind of like these little curves, okay? So keep that in mind. Check out the galleries at Brain Buffet or whatever and, um, and then work on it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to 
Let me turn my head back on so I can pick up the color. Alrighty, and then turn that back off. And what I'm going to do, flip that. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, and I'm going to just basically kind of start where I think I should. Right? Kind of coming down here a little bit. Now I noticed that I've got a little tiny bit of a bump there, so I'm going to try and draw that in. I think right about there. Okay, and then I'm going to control click and I'm going to do this outside edge here. Alrighty, and then I think I should also kind of do this one here. Oh, that's messed up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, since I already got the skin color here, what I need to do is take all of these objects. And um, by the way, here's another trick, right? I've got this color here. I'm going to, um, this is the skin color right here. Okay, and what I can do is I can take that color and drag it into the swatches palette. And you see how I just added it right there? So that's my skin color that I've been using for my head because I may need that a couple other times. And then the other thing I can do is I can pick up the darker color, right? The one that I'm going to use for shadows, which maybe that's good. And I'm going to drag that in there too. So now I've got these colors that I can always just kind of jump back to real quick. Okay, so we're going to have a darker inside. And um, then on this one, of course, I want it to be filled because I want it to hide this other stuff. I want that to be filled with my lighter skin color. Oops, I just did it backwards. All right, like that. So now, open up my layers palette, turn it all on. Okay, and I can see, see how this line's going over the top? But I filled this part of the nose. So if I just go to this filled path and drag that up to the top, that will hide everything else. Okay, now I think already it's not looking bad. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. You know what, that's already not looking bad, but I think that if I did some nostrils, it would actually look a lot better. So I'm going to just hide all this again, go to my nose layer, zoom in, and I'm going to just basically draw those nice dark nostrils there that I've got. Particularly nice, I would like to say. As far as, as, far as man nostrils go, it's a pretty much perfect specimen. So take that. So run and tell that. All right. So, oops, a little bit too far. Come on, baby. Alrighty, and um, I'm gonna make that a lot darker, right? Because it's a shadow. So I'm gonna go really, really, really dark. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. You can see only a little bit of it showing. So that's good. That saves me a little bit of work. And with my layers, drag those underneath the nostril and uh, yeah I think that's probably going to be just about right let's turn everything else on and back out and see how it looks uh, you know what once again knocking it down that looks good okay so you guys are going to get a bonus here because um, I uh, I have hair on my little goatee here I've got hair on my chinny chin chin and um, my son's got some some hair that's like you know longer and a little bit easier for um, you know for some of you girls to relate to maybe with these like strands and stuff. So let me show you the couple tricks. All right. So first thing, new layer, and I'll call it uh, actually this first one I'll call it goatee. And one way to do hair is to just basically trace the whole you know outline section there. Okay, and I kind of recommend sort of, here's a trick, check this out. I'm going to just go zigzaggy. Okay, it looks very fake, right? We know that. We know it looks very fake. That's okay. For now, watch the trick. Watch the trick. Watch the trick. Watch and learn. Okay, so, oh, and that doesn't look real. So I'm going to kind of alt to kind of have it sort of go into that. 
you see that goatee kind of happen in there. Okay, so now check this out. Looks really fake there at the bottom, but remember this tool, warp tool, right? I can hold Alt while I drag down and left, and that kind of shrinks it down some. But now watch this. Let me just kind of give these a little bit of a curve. Oops, select the object, and just kind of brush against them. Give them a little bit of a little bit of a curve there. I can go and I can see one spot where I have the line actually crossing over itself. That's always bad news bears. So I'm going to kind of drag that back over this way. And this point, I can see it made a new point there. So I'll bring that and make it pointy. This point, too much here. Okay. So that's one little trick there to kind of get a little bit more of a realistic look there. I'm going to flip that around. Oops, select the object, flip it around, and I'll pick up a color. Now I've got this really, you know, peppery. I've got all kinds of colors here. So I'm going to pick kind of like this darker brown. Oops, that wasn't it, but I would just shift it myself. It's, uh, boy, how do you make brown? Well, let me pick it from right down here. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pick kind of like this darker brown as a base. And then you can see, though, in my goatee, I've got all kinds of colors. And, you know, a lot of you guys got that, too. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just trace another section, right, where I've got this kind of lighter section. I'm going to alt-drag. Alt-drag that up there. Okay, so I'm going to kind of click that in there. And um, actually, i got a better idea. Watch this, because I want this to go all the way to the top, since that lighter area does go all the way. So I'm going to just kind of drag that all right up here like this. And I will use that new awesome shape builder tool. Definitely one of my favorite tools in this new Illustrator. I'm going to just have these two lines kind of overlapped a little bit. And then fill them in. Get this one filled with its color. Oops, let me actually, let me take this and suck up this lighter brown. And then click on this object here, flip it. Remember I said when it goes light, just double click outside of it. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is highlight both of those and use my Shape Builder tool. Okay, and then I can kind of hold Alt and get rid of that little section that went over the edge there. Okay. So there we go, looking kind of weird again right now, but turn my layers all back on and I can see that it kind of looks actually a lot better, right? Zoom in, this thing right here just looks weird. Yes, it's in the photo, but you know what? If it doesn't look right in our final, in our final project, we got to get rid of it, right? So I'm going to just kind of drag that all in a little bit more. Actually, maybe I'll even have a little bit kind of sticking out there. Um, so yeah, there's one way to kind of do hair, right? Kind of different little sections like that. Okay, so I'm going to hide all these. And uh, let's take a look, and we're going to use my son Caleb here. Let's take a look at how uh, we might do his hair. Okay, because he's got, you know, kind of all these little curls and stuff here at the end. So first thing I'm going to do, of course, is I'm going to make a new layer called Caleb Hair. And I'm going to just kind of trace around, again, that whole basic shape here. And hold Alt. Oops. Let's flip those. Hold Alt. Right, so I'm kind of... Hold Alt. I'm kind of like even making up some of my own little curves here. I was looking at a student the other day doing an excellent job with his hair, like really, really super. And I actually opened his file the other day before I left and took a look at how he did it. Okay, so you can see I'm just basically tracing not every single, not every single one, but I'm tracing a lot of these like little curly hair thingies to get that shape
Okay, so there's that's and of course none of this matters. Oops, that was a little little close. Um, so I'll just white arrow, bring that back some. Okay, so here I'm gonna kind of come out, get this nice point there. And I'm doing that alt trick where you hold alt. Bend it back out. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is fill that. Oops. And you can see that I'm not connected. You see that? So I can just click on this one here and drag it right to there. You see the circle and that will close it off. Okay. So now I'll just kind of sample up his hair. And when we turn his head back on, the head actually, his head is going to need to be on top of his hair because of the way I just drew it. So I have to, golly, select his head, and then you arrange, bring to front. Oops, okay, so that brings it to the top of that. And now what I'm going to do is make a new layer and drag his head to it and put that above his hair. Okay, so now with his hair, I just kind of sample and pick a different color and just for the sake of the tutorial here, I'm just going to kind of randomize it some. Okay. And now it's not looking real because the way that I've got his hair, his uh, face going here, right? So what I'm going to do is, this is an important part to understand here. I've got the Caleb hair, the base all in the back. Then I have his face and now I need another one called Caleb front hair. And now what I'm going to do is delete those or hide those two. And now with the same color selected, right, I'm just going to kind of like grab all these pieces that are sort of over his hair. And if I use the same color, then um, I don't have to worry Like even though there's not a curve in that, I'm going to put a little bit of a curve because I think otherwise it would look unnatural. Boy, that's bothering me the way it fills. So I'm going to stroke it. All right, kind of put it up there. Okay, now, there's a couple advantages that this affords us. The first is that we can take, oops, we can take this kind of little front area here. All right, and we're going to Hold Alt and stretch these out a little bit because I sort of accidentally got them a little. Just doing some tweaking here really quick with the white arrow. Okay, now these shouldn't matter too much. You see how, um, you know, this is a little pointy or whatever? That's not going to matter if I use the same color. If I go to Caleb Hair and I suck up that setting, right? You see how. They look kind of invisible now, but I put his head in the middle and look at that. We've got really, really pretty good looking hair on Caleb here. Okay. And we can see this one little spot right there where his head's kind of poking out. We could leave that there or we just kind of grab the white arrow, white arrow. And on this layer, grab that one anchor, just drag it over a little bit. Okay. So that's one cool way to do it. The other thing you can do is if you wanted to like, you know, you saw his hair has got all those different colors. I could take that hair section there and lighten it up a little bit. 
you know and that might actually look okay now this one I don't think it does but it would I think that if I brought these again brought this all out to the sides more you know like if I kinda basically redrew the top of his head here I can get that kind of um you know just that that look where you've got the sort of multiple colors because his hair is a little brighter on top than it is underneath and so uh you know I can kind of try and sort of mimic that here I want to bend that some oops holding alt alright so now I can kind of go back out and that left side is not going to look good because it's way too fat um, but you know I could fix that a little bit later and you can see that I can try and do that thing where I can kind of show those two, you know, those two sort of shades of hair that he has and how it's kind of like in those little sort of sections, right? So that's one way to do it and that's looking okay. And maybe I'd have to go in and you know, kind of trace another one. Uh, another really cool trick with hair when you've got strands like that, um, I'll actually just, uh, I'll show you in the next video because right? there's another, another way to do it that's like kind of a neat trick. So um, we'll talk about the, the way to do strands of hair in the next video. Okay, now this is another way to do it that I've been experimenting with. I'm not sure, honestly, how well it's going to work. Okay, so let's just do this. Let's uh, turn those off and I'm going to, well, let's even just kind of hide those paths. And so here's another way that you could try doing the hair. And what that is, is we can actually just kind of like take our pen tool and follow down to a point and we want to fill okay or I'm sorry only a stroke and then we can go to this new tool which is the width tool and make the hair like kind of thick right here and you see it kind of gets thinner there and we can just kind of make that as a strand alright and then we're going to take another pen tool kind of draw it down right and take our width tool gonna to make it nice and fat here Okay, and so you can see that I'm basically just sort of like trying to draw all these individual strands and um, not this is something I'm just experimenting with because this tool is new to this version of Illustrator. Oops, control click, make a new line. So I'm just going to kind of click here, you know, give this a give this a try, see what happens. I think they all need to have a little bit of a curve on them. All right, so um, I guess I want this a little bit longer. So now, as I take my width tool and I just go ahead and start bumping all these up in their width. Okay. Oops. How do I get onto that one now? Well, don't want that. Okay. So now what happens is, uh, let's go ahead and turn the head back on. You can see that I'm slowly building kind of hair there. And as I keep going, if I make them all, you know, kind of like long enough and thick enough, and then my width tool, right, I will be starting to get some really nice kind of like little, you know, hair effects. And what I'll do at the end of this Okay, you can see that it's kind of getting there, and, and just to make it go a little bit faster, I'm going to just alt-drag some of these guys, just so we can kind of have some more. I'll flip that around a little bit. Once you got all the ones that you need, you could go through, and um, I'm going to just hide those two layers, and just select all these, right? Do Object, Expand Appearance, and then with the Pathfinder is the easiest way to do this. Get the Pathfinder out and you're gonna click this unify one there okay and now click off of it 
and now you've kind of got like you know a sort of hair look there okay so you can see that as we if we were to fill it in and stuff up here at the top you know that's kind of a neat trick okay so the next thing we're going to talk about really quick let's take a look at our photo here and hide all this stuff how complete am i looking um actually let me actually get rid of all of caleb's stuff and move him way down to the bottom so it doesn't get in my way Alrighty, so um let's turn all these on here okay i'm looking actually pretty much done oh eyebrows okay so eyebrows and eyebrows you know what eyebrows is the same trick uh, that I recommended with Caleb's hair. Here's a really cool way to do eyebrows. Check this out. A couple different ways, but the way that I like to do it now with this new uh, new tool, the new width tool, is I'm going to just click on my pen tool and I'm going to basically just kind of trace that shape of my eyebrows. Right, flip it, suck up the color actually first, and then flip it, and then I'm going to use the width tool. And make it a little thicker here. I think I need to zoom in. Okay, so there's my width tool. I bring that in so that I kind of am getting some of my eyebrows are like missing in this photo but um, I actually do have eyebrows for those of you that don't know me just saying all right so now I'm just gonna kind of click on those eyebrows and I'm just gonna shape them with the width tool check that out honestly it doesn't look super hot right now but wait till you see Wait till you see how it looks when we get the other stuff showing here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of alright, so takes a little bit of takes a little bit of work here. Actually, that one I'm going to get rid of. Let's even just see how that looks. Zoom out, turn the rest on. Um, it actually looks almost good enough to me. Um, this one needs a little tweaking because the eyebrow, when it's when you've got a three quarter shot, it should actually go off your face some like that because that's what really happens. Alrighty, yeah, look at that eyebrow trick. That's a good trick right there. This new width tool in Illustrator is just amazing. Um, so I think that's already looking pretty good. So yeah, I'm going to save that and then we're going to call that eyebrows and then we'll move on to talking about the shirt and the background and all the rest of the stuff. This is the hardest part. You've already done the hardest part. The rest is all just easy. All right, you've got basically all the tools that you need. Um, you know, of course, I would need to do the shirt now. So I could just kind of click here and make a new layer and I'll call this shirt. And um, for me, the shirt needs to be above the neck because see how I didn't draw the neck perfectly. So it needs to be above the neck. I could even just, since I'm hiding everything, put the shirt, you know, on the top like I've been doing everything else and then just drag it where I need it. But um, here what I need to do again is all of the visible edges I need to trace, right? So I kind of trace that down there. Oops, flip that. Um, and one thing that I like to do sometimes is like you can see here that like this sleeve, um, there's a lot of wrinkles that are kind of making this sleeve stand out. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just trace that and I will suck up that color and then what I do oops go to the color palette here and when I go to this other go to my stroke here and put that same color in the stroke but then I'll just make it a little bit darker and that gives me edges on my shirt okay so now what next thing I'm going to do is trace here and really I should have traced should have started at the bottom but we can reorder them so it doesn't matter a whole lot now the neck, remember the neck goes all the way down in here. So what I have to do is I have to actually trace this and that sleeve I'm going to leave separate so I can kind of go wherever I want here. But then I'm going to kind of, you know, do my little alt dragging trick to create some of these wrinkles. And I don't have to be perfect on it, right? I just want to kind of 
get that back there. Okay, um, and I'm going to use the same trick here, but just kind of dragging that down below. So see how my sleeve is kind of already, you know, showing forward a little bit. Now that's sort of obvious right now, but it'll be less obvious uh, when I put all the rest of the shadows in. My phone's going off like crazy. Okay, so I'm going to do this last one here. Ooh, now here I have to be careful because of the neck, right? I have to finish tracing this neck really perfectly. So I'm going to zoom in and stay on this path here. And I can zoom out. Pick up where I left off. You should know that trick. Whoa, too much wrinkle there, but that's okay. Fix it later. All right, so again, I'm going to arrange that one down to the back. Oh, and my shirt is kind of showing up too much. All right, so with that one, what I'm going to have to do is, um, how will I do that? I know what I can do. I'm going to just take another path, just kind of draw that and have no stroke on it. See how I just basically covered up that little area there? But now what I've got to do is now I've got to get that color back in. So I'm going to put that color back in and no, and make that my fill with no stroke. So now I just am going to kind of start drawing those shadows. So I'll hide them right now, but now I'm just going to kind of draw this big shadow here that you're getting on that shirt. All right, and I'm not going to kind of keep going with that, but you'll just get the idea. See how that's starting by just kind of tracing out those shadows areas. I start to get like a natural feel in the shirt. That's what you want to do. Just kind of continue with that. Last thing that I can recommend to make it look really, really, really great is, let me turn that down, hide all these. I'm going to go back into my face and what I will do is I will kind of trace the shadow areas. Okay, so I'm going to do another one here called Face Shadows. All right, and so I can see I've got kind of like a darker area here. And I can even, well, probably going to have to trace it in pretty close. As you can see, I could go off the edge. going to reconnect these two here and um, what I have to do is turn on my head layer suck up that color and then I go here to my color palette and of course again just like I've done before make it a little bit darker okay so we just stay on that color now turn the head layer off just look for other shadows okay so here's a big obvious shadow right here under my face there. Um, where are some other shadows? Here's kind of a shadow area in here. Oops. Control click. Oops. Undo. Come on. Control click. Whoa. I got off my layer. Um, so anyway, just going to kind of go in and, and trace some of those shadow areas, right? Especially where it's really dark and uh, that one actually I just noticed there was like a really dark area in there I'm gonna actually even retrace that and make that even darker so now I'm gonna have two kind of layers of shadow there see that and then when I turn on my head all the way whoop
you can see that I'm starting to get some of those areas now. Of course, that one's way too dark. That actually, one thing that will help is bring my eyebrows above that layer. That'll keep some of it. All right, but you can kind of see how that's happened. It's probably just a little bit too dark, so I can just come back here and lighten it, and then it won't look so unnatural. It looks like a big splotchy thing. But yeah, there we go. See that? A little bit lighter, probably. A little bit lighter. So you just kind of keep playing with it until you get everything kind of, you know, the way that you need to. But the more detail you do, the better it's obviously going to look. Okay, so you want to do a good job. You want to have a really great project that's headed for the wall or just looks awesome that you can be really proud of. The trick is work hard on it. And there's no shortcut to that. All right. So... So zoom out, you can see, you know, starting to kind of come alive, right? So the other thing that I can do is, and the very last thing I'm going to say, and then this tutorial is over, is another thing I can have besides the face shadows is the, oops, head and neck, is the highlights. Okay, so, in the, and I can do it in the same, or I can make another one called highlights. And basically, I'm just going to trace some of these areas, like here you can see in the top of my head, nice little shine there. All right, and what I would do is take that color and make it lighter than the rest. So I would turn the layer on. Let's turn my head on and see how that looks now. Whoa. Click on that object. Then I can see I can't turn K down, so can I just do like a little bit there, maybe a little bit there. You know, you just gotta kind of play with it to get some some idea. Or what you, the other thing you do is try just suck, sort of sucking up some of these other colors, you know, and just see how you can get sort of close, you know. So it's all just a matter of sort of playing with it a little bit. Looks like that might do the trick. Yeah. So you know, and try and get some of those lighter and the darker areas in, and then you get like a really cool example, like some of the ones just on the Mac Lab or that you might see in the um, online lab. So that is all I've got for you on self-portraits. All right, that's what it takes. If you want to do better than me, then do it. Do a little research. Look at cartoons. Look at other people's examples. Figure out how to fix this color. All right, because there's got to be a way to do it better than what I'm doing because it just does not look good. So uh, go ahead and just basically keep working and just figure out your own little tweaks. If you get your own little style, that's when it starts to get really, really cool. All right, so there we are, self-portraits. It's certainly not done, but that's all that you need to know in order to basically get started on this project and, uh, and really to kind of finish it up. It's all just a matter of continuing and moving on in the directions that I told you. I don't want to give you a step-by-step -step on how to do it. I want to teach you the concepts and then you work out on, on your own. All right, so that's it. This is Schwartz out for the self-portrait. I know these were long videos. Appreciate your patience, but that's what it takes to make this project happen because this is a challenging project. All right, take it easy, guys.